to order at 6.01. So we, we do have a quorum of select people here in the building. So if something does happen and Paul loses service or something like that, we will continue on as, um, as above. But, uh, and Lindley won't be on with us this evening. So, uh, so first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. It looks like we're gonna have to amend uh, the appointment for the EIC committee. So we'll take that off for this evening. And then I would say, instead of having to sit here through the whole meeting for move the Cub Scout pack up, any issues with that? I was just thinking we'll move that right to the top right after public comment. So we'll do the Bethel Cub Scout. At two o two, and and we'll have to add a, an executive session just to talk about the dedication of the town report. Um, I know it technically doesn't meet the legal obligations to go into executive session, but we've always done it as a surprise issue, and okay. I don't think uh, anybody's going to have too many issues about that. Yeah, sounds sounds good. So we'll just add an executive session at the end um, so that we can talk about the dedication of of the of the town meeting book. <clears throat> Anything else to amend or change on the? Just if uh, one of the people that I want to talk about like my talk is the transfer station budget. Okay. Line item. All right. Okay. I couldn't hear what Dave said. Dave just said he wanted to um, bring up something at the um, when we talk about the transfer station budget piece. Okay. I think it's more related to our discussion that we had last time in regards to the. Into local agreement piece, correct? Okay. Correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. Any any other additions or changes? If not, just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Julie, did you get all those? Yep. Okay, perfect. We're leaving the agenda tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So um, first first on the agenda now uh, means there's no appointments is we'll go right to public comment. So uh, now is the time to anybody that's, well, probably going to be anybody that's on the uh, Zoom call. <laughs> if you have anything for comment on, uh, just raise your hand and we'll call on you and um, We'll give you, like we've talked about, three three to five minutes per discussion item. Or if anybody in here, if not, hearing none, we'll close public comment. Uh, we'll move along. Our first uh, amended item for the night is to talk about the Bethel Cub Scout Pack. And I, I would assume it's still in regards to using the town hall for for the winter. Okay. So I know we we all had gotten um, a little make a uh, little um, uh, write up in our packets. So if you want, just kind of take us through what sure. what you're looking to do and. How long? I know most of the information is in here, but just so that yeah, we have some sort I of- Yeah, I think all the information should be in the letter that was submitted. Um, basically, the PAC doesn't have an indoor place to meet right now. Um, we had been meeting pre-pandemic at the school, but the school's trying to keep you know people out of the building, which is understandable. Um, so we've been meeting outside until the weather turned, <laughs> which is making it a little bit challenging. Um, 
Although these kids are troopers and last weekend or the weekend before Christmas, we did campfires, made it fun and interesting, um, but stayed outside. Um, but we're just looking for somewhere. We're up to 12 kids now. We were down to five and now we're up to 12. So we need a place indoors where we can spread out. Um, so are you talking about using this room here or the this, one downstairs? This room would be great. Okay. I mean, I don't think at the end of the day, it really matters. Yeah, if you've got a dozen kids that need the social distance. This is, if, if, as long as I had it right, it was Saturdays? We meet Saturdays okay. at one. Every Saturday? Every Saturday. Okay. And I mean, I'm just trying to. And Therese, for the winter time, do we have any anything going on in here on Saturdays? I don't know. She'll have to contact Kelly Hill, send Kelly yeah. an email. And um, this week, and Kelly will tell you, you can pre-schedule your Saturdays with Kelly. Yep, okay. So I guess what you're looking for us is about waiving the rest Waiving the fee, because um, for us to do a one-time fee would be one thing, but to do it every week, it right. would add up quickly. What does the board feel about waiving the rental fee for the Cub Scouts? I have no and if I correct me if I'm wrong, this is a Bethel related Cub Scout. Yeah, Bethel. It's Pac 202 based in Bethel. We do have kids from other towns, but the, the bulk of the kids are from right here in Bethel. They were around when I was five. <laughs> yeah, the troop used to meet in the basement of the town hall. I know we had to clean a bunch of stuff out of there because we were, you guys, it was being renovated. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was paintings all over the walls. <laughs> and some of our adult leaders remember when they met there as, as scouts, so. Sure. Okay, just need a motion to allow the uh, Bethel Cub Scout Pack 202 um, rent-free usage of the town hall for Saturdays, uh, assuming the schedule works out with, um, with Kelly, um, Saturdays from one to three. So moved. Second. Okay. okay, all in favor? Aye. We're good. So as long as everything works out with Kelly on your schedule and you're good to go, I mean, I'm, whatever you're saying. Yeah, I'll, be I'll follow up with Kelly and thank you yeah. very much. Sounds good. Thanks. Can Dave move his microphone a little bit? I think it just needs to be in front of him a little more. Right here. Blocked by your computer. 16 inches away from my face. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. I'm better. That is better. Thank you. Great. Is that better? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank that's you. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you can put it on. Put it right in front of you. All we can All hear right. is bells with tones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and then next on, we had to uh, continue our discussion on the budget, as well as the goal tonight was to make a motion to approve it. So we had it at, I think I'm at, uh, let's see. The one I put in your packet is at 2.02% after the adjustments for retirement and things. Okay. So one in the that was in the packet. We, what, if anything, have we done about uh, pay increases? Um, we budget a three percent. We budget a three percent increase. It doesn't mean anybody gets it. It's based on their evaluation. So it's up to three percent. Sometimes it could be more because, say. Um, maybe not everybody gets 3%. Sometimes there's a little bit more play in the budget depending on the department. Um, but yes, that's what we budgeted at was 3%. I had done a brief, a salary survey for the road crew and looked at what the state of Vermont was paying because most recently they all received a $4 an hour increase. And I feel like we're in pretty good standing. And if you look at the entire package, not just salaries, we also pay for the full premium of people's health insurance, half the deductible, and we're at 19.4% on the retirement. And we also pay for dental. So the package itself is pretty good. But we did, um, so we so we budget 3%, excuse me. 
And, and if, just correct me if I'm mistaken, but as I understand, there are no town employees who are below $15 an hour. Is that correct? Correct. There may be some lifeguards or seasonal positions, but no full-time positions are below $15 an hour. Okay. And there are also, too, I think that the treasurer, I know for a fact the treasurer and the... Treasurer and town clerk salary is up because you had, she'd got a 3%, but I believe she asked for a 5% and you guys felt more comfortable letting the voters vote on that. So there is a 5% increase in there for the town clerk treasurer, which is her request. I was looking this evening uh, and the uh, cost of living in Vermont is up 6.5 percent uh yep. and so i am asking whether three percent is sufficient uh given the that reality i i'd like to make a comment on that and uh for years and we're going back a lot of years when the cost of living was 0 0.01 and 0 and 0 0.1. The people that work for the town of Bethel will get 3% and 4% every year. I think I think what Teresa's has done, she I, I don't think that the our 3% versus the state 6% is a viable comparison. I think the comparison that Teresa's has done by looking at Statewide salaries is more online than what we should do than that number of 6%. I will say that Dave is right. What we do in the past, Gene, what I have done is we have always, like I said, since I've came, we've budgeted 3%. But it depends. I always look at what the Social Security cost of living increase is. So there are years that that Dave is right that people may get a one percent cost of living adjustment, and then they also might get that other two percent in a merit. So um, we do try to look at that. There was a year, I don't know if it was last year, the beginning of COVID, the cost of living was zero, and we did freeze salaries um, for a while. And I did end up giving out a couple of increases later in the year, but not the full year because, um, but yet our insurance premiums went up, our retirement went from 13.84 to 19.5. So that's something that the town residents pay. So I did look at that, Gene, and saw that it was gonna be 6% this year, but also thought about, you know, I, I kind of in the school of thought with Dave, which was, you kind of have to level it out and um, it's hard for the, you know, to take a big hit. And, and I always try to take the whole package in consideration. <sighs> yep. I, and I, I fully understand and appreciate the difference between what it costs the town and what an employee receives. I understand that those are two different numbers because I live with the same thing, budgeting for my whole life. Mm. Uh, the, it's just, but I did want to ask the question uh, because of, this is uh, because of inflation. This is an extraordinary and an unusual year, and so I just wanted the question asked. No, you're right. It is. It totally is. And and um, because at first I'd had a lesser percentage than three, and then um, and then obviously saw the new numbers and was like, yike, <laughs> what are we going to do? So, but, but that's certainly up to your discretion as a board. I just built the budget around three. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing too, we've talked about for years is, and, and obviously we're probably due to take a look at the, what we call the, the total compensation package, you know? Um, but so, for so many years, it's, it's difficult to kind of look at that because because we pay such a high percentage of um, like retirement, retirement and, and, and back end pieces yep. where maybe in the private sector, your salary might go up, but you may have to contribute a greater percentage of your 
retirement or your health care too. So it's always been one here. I, I want to say it was the towards the end of when uh, it was right before Therese had taken over. We had we had looked at the total compensation package. Is that right, Therese? It could it be right around that to see what because we were kind of trying to figure out more so on attracting talent to the town um, at that time. But um, but once you add in the total compensation package, it was it was oh, pretty I, lucrative compared yeah. to and they. Well, benefits are significant. There yeah. are times when, during those years that you're we just talking ate, about when health insurance itself would have yeah. gone up 10%. So we just ate exactly. the 22% of retirement this year um, that wasn't budgeted for. Um, Is retirement based on salary level? Yes. So yep. if, sal if salary goes up 3%, so does the retirement. Yep, it's yeah, it's thirteen point eight four or no, it's nineteen point five percent of the um of the salary is what the town pays, and currently the employee pays six point six five percent of their salary into the retirement. And do town employees are they subject to withhold federal withholding? Yes. Okay, not like some teachers. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, they're okay. they're subject to all the withholdings and um but unlike unlike healthcare, you need to need to understand that retirement, while it is not money in your pocket today, you all that money that's going in there is your money. Where healthcare, you for lack of a better word, you just throw that money away if you're if you're well and not sick. That five thousand or seven thousand dollars a year I spend on health care is gone. Right. If I put five thousand dollars in your retirement, it's my money someday. Right. Once you're vested. Plus, yeah, once you're vested and plus interest and everything else. Yeah, I I'm not I'm not kidding. Yeah, I fully understand. I'm just uh, okay. So it looked like um, Therese over like overall budget number um, based on the revenue and cost it was a net net increase of thirty two thousand I think I had written down um, could be I meant yeah I yeah. have to look I have two point oh two percent it was a net increase of thirty two thousand which was you know about a penny and a half on the grand list. Um, and I know we had at the last meeting, we kind of talked about like this 2%, two, yep. which is yep. about two cents, kind of where put a little money for, you know, future endeavors. Right. Um, and then I was looking at it. I mean, I don't know necessarily where the best place to put it is because there's a bunch of things that could potentially pop up here. But, um, you know, if we added another $8,000 worth of cost, that would take us to our two cent area that we were talking about last time. And I do know there's a few few things that may pop up here through some future discussions. One is, you know, um, as we were talking about the potential stormwater things on uh, Dart Hill that we may have to address, um, as well as um, like in our packet, there was some talk about some of the cla uh, fourth class roads that, <clears throat> that may need yeah may need some materials, a little extra TLC here over the next couple of years. So um, I was thinking that we would take like an extra 8,000, bring that right up to the 2% and we could say whatever, we can say it's gravel or gravel and culverts or something, put it into the highway department so we can use it for one or the other. Um, did, and you it, set a, did you set aside a class four road uh, improvement? Well, a lot. yes. Yeah, in highway rehab, when we put in the capital fund, the capital fund is broken down for class four bridges and highways. But did did we end up, remember uh, when Mo, I think it was the last year that Mo was here, remember we talked about having a, yep. a class four specific yep. um, item. And I think we had talked about like eight or $10,000 a year based upon the, the uh, rate of upgrades um, that we need to do. Um, yeah, and we did it. It's in the one, if you, I don't have it in front of me, but the 
um, we did it in the capital fund budget. If you did it under highway rehabilitation, that 115,000 we have budgeted, we did it through there. So when you look at the revenue, you'll see how much we put in for bridges, how much we put in for class four roads and how much we put in for roads. Okay. So it's all in that one capital fund. So if I was going to add 8,000, I'd add it to highway rehab. That way you don't lose it in your fiscal year. <clears throat> okay, because I, I'm looking at the uh, budget for 20, budget for 21, and the proposed for 22. It's all the same number. So it doesn't reflect. It, it is in the budget, but when you... It is in the budget, but when you look at the capital, like if you look in the town report from last year, if you look under the... Um, capital highways or roads or whatever it's labeled as it, you'll see it. Um, I'll make sure you have it in the next packet. Okay. I, I, would, I guess I would agree. I think Chris said that if we took that 8,000 and added it to that 115, that's where he suggested we put that money, the extra eight. Is that what you're saying, Chris? Well, I just, it, well, one, I was trying to get to that kind of magic number that we had been talking about. And then you know, a couple of communications that have come back and forth reading the class four um, committee's notes, plus we had been talking about some of those, um, as well as, um, you know, the residents on Dart Hill, there's likely we're going to have to spend some money in one or two or both of those places. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and probably the most logical place to put that, you know, would be there. Um, I think if we budget for it or don't budget for it, we're likely going to be doing something, uh, right? Right. <laughs> um, and too, don't forget, if we have to do any sort of surveying on right road, that's going to cost us too. So I think that's a good place to put it is highway rehabilitation. Right. So on paper, if we if we went up 8,000, we on paper, we would be at the 2%, which is Right. Coincidentally, is about two cents on the tax rate. Um, of course, right. grand list. If the grand list goes up a little bit, that'll make an adjustment there. But based on the current projection of the ground grand list, that's where we'd land. The, uh, Are you making a change somewhere else? Because the budget I gave you is at two point oh two, and if you add eight thousand dollars, it's going up. If you look at the bottom of the second page of the revenues. I'm projecting 2.02 right now. And if I add eight grand, I'm. Well, you, you took out the transfer station uh, income too. I did just right. because, right. I took out the transfer station income and I added in the cost, split the cost of what it would cost to do the landfill maintenance. If, you know, just depending on what's going to happen with the negotiation. I didn't want to count on a revenue we didn't have. And then- um, You mean the closure fee? The closure, I took out the revenue of us receiving money back from the um, solid waste in case we're not part of the, in case we're not part of it anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So we would absorb that portion of the salaries that I had allocated to the transfer station then I did add back in, yeah, the, the, we have to do annual maintenance for the landfill, test for PFOAs and all sorts of good, good stuff. And uh, so I got the cost from Jen and split it in half, just in case that wasn't, if we were to get out of it and it wasn't negotiated in, that the right. landfill station had to pay for it. I didn't want us to get caught with our pants down, so, so to speak. Right. Have we budgeted enough for gas for the constable and diesel fuel for the town? I hope so. Given, I mean, look given the cost increases in those that particular item. Well, compare when we looked at what they had spent last year and then what they had spent so far this year. Um, yeah, we. I mean, it's it's a it's it's a gamble, but it depends on the weather. If the weather goes crazy, they have more, they're out more than they're going to spend more diesel. Um, but we've been good with the budget so far. And then even this year, they hadn't even purchased diesel until recently. So I think that we're okay. But you know, I know my think, ball's a little. I think that I think the fifty-five thousand dollar number that we have budgeted or have had budgeted the last couple of years has been a very you know conservative number that we've had in there because there's a lot of factors in there. Well, one, 
if prices go up, right, which they are. But two, the fire department uses the same fuel supply. So it all depends on calls and how much activity that equipment gets. Um, but it even looks like, I mean, if you look at, you know, if, if, if 55 was the true number, you'd be saying, well, we need to, you know, we purchase X amount of gallons and it's up a dollar. We need to add this. But I think there's enough, enough room in, in that use. number because we had, when I had come onto the board, we had been the opposite where we were budgeting like $10,000 and it was costing us $30,000 a year, you know? So we were like, why, why are we going to continue to do this? So I, I think there is, I mean, there's always that chance that it goes higher and we all lose on it. But I think right those, now- Those are my questions. <laughs> that's fine. And um, as far as the constable, he's going to be, well, that's this year's budget, but I think so. I mean, we, we've always managed pretty well with the constable budget for gas. So I'm- And I think you're still at the constable end of things. You're still, you know, we're struggling to get you know, the right amount of hours in there right now. So I, it's you know, true. I, we're not awesome. using, we're not using the cars as often as we'd like it to be. Okay. Um, no, Oscar's going to be out for the month of January and maybe even part of February. So we're going to be down even. It'll just be Justin. So should we may be making any kind of adjustment in the cruiser, um, the cruiser number, because we do, we did have to swap out to a new cruiser here this year. So do we still need to build that fund as much this year you know, in the next budget? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I did a the spreadsheet on it. I think that once we change out, it, all it's going to do is basically, well, because we didn't buy a, I try to remember if we bought a newer, I feel like it was the same year. It's a good question, Paul. I, can't, I don't have that thing in front of me. Um, and I guess I didn't put it in your packet, my capital cruiser spreadsheet. Oh, I know. I gave it to Kelly for the town report. I'll have to look at it, but I think we're okay. Just because I think the cost of what we, the cost rate, you can't even buy a used vehicle right now for 10 yeah. grand. So I yeah. think, yeah. So I think that we're okay for this year. If, if we end up, if the economy changes, we may be able to dial it back next year, but it's, it's hard to know, especially too, because we're not buying, you know, brand new ones. If something goes wrong, I think, especially this coming year, another COVID year, we're going to want the money, but maybe next year we'll be able to dial it back. That's a good point, Paul, but I make a note here to look at my, to look at that spreadsheet. Well, just looking at that point. Oh, two, you know, is that oh, two going to go? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. So this budget does not include the the extra funds that Chris was talking about in order to get to two percent. Is that correct? Because we're already at we're already at two percent. You're right. We're already at two percent. Yes, that's that's the budget I put in your packet. So if you had eight thousand dollars, you're going obviously over two percent. But it's not. You know, you're like two point two percent. It's well, I'm, I, that, I just yeah. wanna. And I got to think that the <laughs> and where it caught us off guard last year is the grand list increased at a larger than normal rate that it absorbed basically our whole increase. Yeah. And I got to think with what's gone on this year that we're going to be looking at a, another increase of the grand list. Don't know exactly what that is, but yeah, I, I, mean, I think once we get done, I'd be surprised but if that, we were paying. But that 2%. doesn't mean more money is available. It just means it gets distributed differently to the taxpayers. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, because I think we have right now, I mean, <clears throat> you know, we, I know we haven't finish the discussions on a couple of these things, but you know, we're likely gonna have to do something with those two discussions that are open, you know, um, either uh, some fourth class road stuff or or the Dart Hill thing. Um, and I think, I think just putting a little extra money aside rather than having to rob it from something else that we want to do, like, you know, we were talking about gravel roads and typically that's where we rob it from is 
you know, so, gravel roads is last. So but even even disregard the percentage, eight thousand dollars isn't even half a cent on the tax rate. And that's what you're talking about. Is if the grant list goes up, the tax rate goes down. Right, right. I so, think adding eight thousand is a great it's idea. Too, it's yeah, it's two tenths of a cent yeah. increase. Eight thousand. I, I think that, I think Teresa said the eight thousand dollar increase is a good yeah, I think it's a great idea because contract work, it's getting harder to find contractors. And I just think that if we have to contract out more work, it's good. And we, and we get behind, you know, we just had this conversation last meeting. I know Dave, Eddie had brought it up and he's right. Um, you know, you gained ground after April, 2019. And then with that flood event and then but it feels like you're just losing ground <laughs> every year. So you have, you know, 60 about 65 miles, anywhere between 64 and 66 miles of road that we maintain. So another 8,000, I think, is is great. Also, too, the budget could change if we stay within the transfer station. We will get some of that revenue back for offsetting possibly some of bookkeeping. So, um, you know, I just had to budget for a, a scenario in which we were no longer part of that just in case, but we don't know what that's going to look like yet too. Right. So that will also help the budget. Well, I suggest that that should be 10,000. Increasing the eight to the 10,000 for highways. Incre yes, the 8,000 Chris was suggesting, which is more than what's in the bud current budget. I'm suggesting that that increase be up to 10 for extra okay. highway stuff. Okay, thank so you. How, how does that impact John Q Public with a tax bill? So 10 cents would be, you know, 10 cents would be about six tenths of a cent. That the ten thousand total. If ten thousand extra is six tenth of a cent, and a cent is about thirty. No, tw twenty one. Oh, twenty one. Okay, twenty eight. And it, again, it depends. The higher the grand list, the less right. Less yeah. Burden, no, I'd just but like to have that out there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we would be looking at like our total budget would be. That would be like you know two point four cents, which is still less than the three that we've talked about for quite some time. I mean, we got to think about it. at the end of the day, last year, it was flat. You know, we thought that we were increasing it, but, you know, um, the grand list went up. <clears throat> so uh, as well as the school we thought was going up and that ended up that was that a wash last year or, or a slight increase or something, slight but increase. it was nothing compared to the eight or 10 cents that we were told it was going to be. That's right. That's right. I forgot. We were playing for the worst case scenario last year. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any numbers on them yet. Um, I, I meant to attend the Zoom meeting last Tuesday and I got I got doing something with the girls and wasn't able to make yep. it. And they don't they don't publish their um, draft budget online like we do. So it was you can find notes of maybe some potential increases, but it doesn't talk about, you can't see the overall budget. So. Would that be helpful if we could get that? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> but I think at some point, and Teresa said this before, I mean, I know last year we were kind of thinking of it because it was, we were told because of the debt and stuff that it was going to be a considerable dollar. But I think at, most of the time, I think, you know, the town and the school are two separate identities and, if we're always kind of pinching our pennies to offset theirs, we're going to get behind on our end too. You know, yeah. that, that, that budget is a, is a public document. I mean, right. I have no problem doing a little push, pushing on that because that's no. We have, we all as citizens have a right to know what that money is. Yeah. It's not like it's a contract negotiation or anything like that. It's not. A, I'm not sure they figured it out yet. They had their finance person just left 
Um, so I don't know where they yeah. stand right now. And, and I say the same thing every year. It's, it's not us up to us to make up the school spending. If people are uncomfortable right. with the budget, they need to say no to a school budget. Yeah. Um, school, school meeting. yeah. I mean, I, I like the budget. Um, I like it even more with the eight or $10,000 in it. Um, I think it, it gives you, Therese, quite a bit of flexibility with some of the potential items that we have out there to do. Um, and, and there's also some opportunities in there already if things go one way or another to save on the budget that we have now. So, um, and, and I, I, you know, being that we were a flat year last year, I, I really don't see that it's asking too much of our citizens for it it feels reasonable to me we're under three percent which has been a target for quite some time um, oh if there's a six percent cost of living increase and we're only up in this little two and a half maybe and and uh teresa i don't know if you saw it in the packet or not but teresa dug out that um the uh i don't know we'll call it regional but i think it's a little yeah. bit larger than regional tax yeah. map of the towns and i don't know what was it like 25 towns or something like that and you know when you start looking at bethel and where we are situated in that 25 towns um when it comes to the the bill that our citizens um have to pay currently and the rank based on the median household, I believe, household income. Yep. Yep. And we are were, we were in the, you know, the bottom third. Um, so we were, we were, you know, one of the more cost effective towns in the region. Um, now, I mean, you look at, the only thing that sticks out to us on that is like our rate is higher. The rate is high, right. Uh, but, but that's not always, you know, because we're a small town and, you know, it's not like you're a, a large municipality that you can spread it out to more people. Um, but if you look at the median tax bill, I think it was, is that right, Therese? It was based on the median tax. I think bill? so. Yeah. The, the town manager in Windsor, Tom Marsh did it. I think I wrote his name. Yeah. At the bottom. We yeah. Were one of the, you know, the third, we were in the third of the more efficient yeah. towns. So yeah. I thought it was good information. To yeah. Have. No, I thought it was really great. Um, yeah, he reached out to me and the other towns. To, he said he put it together and said he'd share it if we participated. I'm like, well, here you go. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. handy. Good information to have. And that might be something that would be nice to, if you haven't already, is make that a public document, Therese, or at town meeting <laughs> day, maybe at, at town meeting day, or you know, maybe have some copies that people can have because I think that's really... I think we always like to see where we're at compared to other people, you know? Yep. Um, I know we've done that exercise for water there a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. It was really nice to see our tax rate where, where we stand <clears throat> with others. So. Yeah, it's, it's in the packet. So the packet is published, but I can put it as a link on the website. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're 18 out of 24 in terms of bill which, you know, reflects the fact that we're 21st out of 24 in terms of home value. So the value being taxed are lower. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, the actual bill is low, even though we've got a higher rate. Right. Uh, yeah, and I, I think, I mean, our budget, if you look through it, it's, it's very futuristic. I think we have, you know, uh, a good balance of, money that's put into funds to uh to afford future endeavors um as well as address our current situations um and i think and, and like teresa's done in certain cases you know a little bit of the worst case scenario on a couple of things that we don't really know 100 percent about so um so i think i think it's a really really good budget so i mean i would entertain a motion to amend the budget to include 10,000 extra dollars that we would put under the highway rehabilitation item. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Okay. Move we adapt the budget. Is that that's it. We, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Great job, Therese. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. No, I thought it was a good one. Well, it's really a group good. effort. It's a group effort. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys looking through it. I bought muffins for the everybody at the town office today, and you weren't there. Ah, <laughs> uh, dang! I'm sorry. I, that. I know, and it's just was just Pam and Dietry. Yeah, so <laughs> no, I yeah, I something going on. I wasn't. I'm like, I'm not spreading anything, and uh, so I was like, I'm gonna stay home today. There, there is something going around because my mom's been sick for like three or four days, five, four days now, and. She's taking the COVID test twice and they've been negative and some yeah. nasty, real nasty thing going around. Yeah, I have taken two COVID tests and they've also been negative. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, definitely something. I was, I pretty much laid on my couch all Christmas. I did not feel well. And, uh, plus, it's, we have such a small office, you don't want to spread anything. It's that time of year where we all, we're all going to be sick for the next couple of months. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so the um, Vermont State Revolving Loan Fund. Yep, that is the what we've been talking about. We had, I had encouraged you to go to full design on phase two of the water project, and that's we have. Um, so what happens is you get the five percent for you zero, five percent, five years zero percent, and they will will wrap it into our next bond that we do when we do the phase two. And um, the reason that I had pushed to go to full design was because of money coming down the pike, we were going to get a new president and you're never sure if they're going to have like era money or do some forgiveness. So we wanted to be in a good, good position. And um, we are over 60% design. We may be in the 70% or higher design. Tim was reviewing plans last week um, for Aldrich and Elliott, and we'll have a meeting in the next couple of weeks. So so this is, uh, we had already known about this. And um, the good news is once we sign this paperwork, I can get reimbursed from for some expenses that we've paid that I haven't been able to get back yet. Um, I think I think it makes a lot of sense, especially right now where there's an extra yeah. $1.7 billion coming to Vermont. And I think, I think if you have shovel ready projects, yep. uh, then you're gonna be more likely to collect that. And I think we're sitting in a good position again. Yeah. Um, as a town to, well, I think in a way in a lucky position because this is yeah. stuff that we need to do. Um, Absolutely. But I think we're sitting in a good position right now where we can take available of some of these funds and not have to come completely out of the uh, yeah. citizens' pockets. I, Absolutely. So you, the, that paperwork, was that in the regular packet that's in this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so see, should, I see the bridge paperwork here as a separate binder. Yeah, and the loan should be in there as well. It's That one's in the other one? It was, should have had, been in that bag. You had two packets. Oh. This is the bridge one. Okay. And you had the like, I, I'll, I'll say like the normal select board. Yeah, the bag. loan should be in that one that you're holding. Okay. Right, so what that. we okay. can do is if, um, so Chris and uh, Dave and Gene will sign and then Paul can swing by the office later this week and sign it. So we need a motion to approve this revolving loan? Yes. Just checking to see, do we all sign it? There's several pages there, Chris. Some There's are just the treasurer, some are all of you, and some are you alone. So there could be as many as four places to okay. sign. <laughs> How many places for us? I think just one, two. The whole, a couple. Whole From what I'm seeing, I think this one. Yep. That's the two. At least. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I think these two. And is there one for just you to sign? Yeah. Um, very. The first one in the was just the chair of the board. Yeah. Chair of the governing body. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then there's some in there for Pam. 
to sign. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so we'll just uh, so move. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't know if these are going back in in the right order of. That's okay. You know how long, Therese, it will be until we were able, if available, to put this out on the street? Put what on the street? This next phase of the water piece. Oh, it looks like we're, our goal was next summer. So to do have a construction season, not this summer, but the summer after. So we were hoping to be able to put out the documents, you know, this winter. So we would bid it, bid it the next, next right. off season? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we're about a year away. Yes. That's what you're okay. Gotcha. And, and from what I understand, I, I don't even think uh, from what I hear that any of that state money is really going to be available until late next fall at the earliest. Yeah, that's what, yeah. And we just, you know, like we wanted to put anybody through another construction season <laughs> right now. Like a Band-Aid, just you get it all done at the same time, right? That's right. That's right. And so this covers what, Sand Hill, Crystal Drive? Yes. Uh, Bicentennial. Bicentennial. Island, Graham, yes. And I still have not given up hope on Bernie slash Leahy because I'm still in the running, don't you forget, for the earmark. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Hopefully Bernie, you're not holding your breath. Well, yeah. Bernie couldn't Bernie couldn't quite get it done, so he reached out to Leahy. So Leahy did something. I figure it's piddly once they tack it onto one of those big bills. What's What's three, 300, 600 grand to little old Bethel, you know, for the yeah. Fed. So Fucking I don't know. Two trillion dollars. I mean, we can yeah. slide one in there. Yeah. Who's going to notice? So we'll see. I'm, I haven't been booted out yet. So <laughs> I'm still keeping my fingers crossed. All right. I was just putting these back in. I'm, I'm assuming that I did it right, but they're in there. Oh, it's fine. Thank you. All right. Next, we had the uh, discussion in regards to the historic bridge. Yes. Yeah, so I think there's some pictures in that packet, but I took a look and this was a bridge on, on, um, oh God, what did I say? Right East road. Bethel. Oh, East Bethel. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jean. Um, and that cold medicine is kicking in. <laughs> so uh, uh, anyway, so I took a look and there's some pictures, I think, in that <clears throat> in that bag, Chris. Mm -hmm. They just weren't going to scan well. They were really dark. And I showed them to Chris and they're, the thing is in really rough shape. It was when it got stored. And apparently when they took it down, it was part of this agreement that a contractor would hang on to it. And then I got a letter from the state saying, hey, you know, this is what this thing looks like. You want to get rid of it. And I wouldn't even begin to know what to do with it. So um, we don't have a place for it. We don't have a project for it. It just makes sense to let it go. So typically on these historic bridges, they'll save either the whole entire bridge or pieces of the bridge for one of two things, either to use as I don't want to say parts, but to use as pieces for existing infrastructure or to rehab the bridge entirely and put it back into place somewhere else. And I think right now the state's saying, you know, this structure that you have there yeah, really, <laughs> this one here, they've exhausted the possibilities of using it. And now it's just sitting there. The state's what? The state's paying rental fee to have it stored? Yeah, we aren't. At this point, yeah, they just are. want us to, I guess, just you know, release yeah. the ownership release. of the bridge. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure, Chris, there might have, I think I put pictures in that bag right next to you, but maybe not. Um, do so do we have any rights to the bridge when it comes to 
you know, the contractor that has it mm -hmm. scrapping it for steel? Do we get no? I think any that revenues it, from that. Or? No, I think it goes to the state because they've the ones who've been paying storage on it. I looked through the agreement okay. and it made some note about that. So no, once we we let it go, they're gonna stop paying rent on it and. And um, they'll probably, my guess would be they, if they're smart, they're going to negotiate a deal with the contractor and that'll, the contractor will get the steel price. And Right. But no, we don't have any. I looked at the agreement that I put in your packet and, and okay. um, it doesn't really make any sense to hold up somebody's yard over it. And, and it was in pretty rough shape. Yeah, and it doesn't it's, look like it's, it's stored outside. Yeah. So it's not like it's been <laughs> undercover for the last how many of our years. Right. <laughs> So as a newbie on the select board, alphabet soup, what is M-O-A? Memorandum of agreement. Thank you. You are welcome. I'm sorry, I should have spelled that out. No, I can ask. Yeah, that's a bridge you got hit with a truck. It was already a piece of crap when I took it down. I don't know why we kept it. Well, I think in some of those cases, they the state requires um, certain age structures to be held for a period of time. And this must have been whatever qualified for the historic bridge program. So, I guess I've never had seen it. So when the gentleman reached out to me from the state, I was like, what? I had to look and see what bridge he was talking about and <laughs> figure it out. I had never heard of it. So, um, mm. but... Anyways, so that's the. What is needed from us? Is there a. Yeah, I think I made a. a no. Is there a signature piece or no? Or just a motion to allow? No, I think there's a signature piece. Let me float through the packet. I feel like you guys had to sign something. I didn't see anything. The only thing I saw at the end is just the signature of the, the original. The... Hang, on. Hang on, I'm looking. How long is it? Can we use it for Pinello? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's in rough shape. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good question. You can, um, but I wouldn't drive across it. <laughs> we can duct tape it and use it for banana. <laughs> so, so it says um, town of Bethel at the bottom. So you could just make a motion, have Chris sign it since he's sitting there. Yeah, I don't. I haven't found the signature spot. Oh, it's at the yeah, end of the letter uh, from V Trans. Yeah, it must not have been in this packet. The second package. It's the one labeled bridge stuff. Yeah. Uh, nice. uh, was it was it it wasn't included in the one that you had set aside here, but I have it in my oh. original one. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's on okay. the second just... page of the of the cover letter. Yeah, he found it. All right. So just just need a motion to uh for the termination of the nineteen ninety eight historic bridge program agreement and MOA. To allow the disposal of bridge number four, Randolph Center Road in East Bethel. So moved. No. Second. Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Seventh. And regional emergency management committee appointment. Yeah, that was pretty self-explanatory. New statute. I'm automatically appointed. Uh, Dave used to be a representative to go to the meetings too. I asked him if he'd be interested in being the second. He said he would. So mm -hmm. I just have to let two rivers know. Okay. So moved. I think the only stickler, um, Teresa, I'm looking at that just a um a formality thing is i know we in the past have asked for somebody to write a letter stating that they do want to do what they're being assigned to because we and the only reason why i say is we have had issues in the past where we put somebody on something and find out that they didn't want to do that so yeah uh, well this is new to us because the statute just changed so i okay. did call Dave Aldrighetti and asked him since he was be doing me a favor or all of us a favor and uh, I had called him and or I forwarded him the email and then we exchanged emails and I talked to him about it um, but yeah it's a new it's nothing we've done before so um, 
<laughs> I'm not sure there's as much interest in doing it as he's kind of felt obligated as the fire chief. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so that's how it right. came about. And then of course they put a deadline on it. So they need it by like the first or something. So was that Gene motioned it and Dave, Dave seconded second it? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and Bethel Royalton transfer station budget. So normally uh, I went back and read the interlocal agreement and it's like the BRTS board passes the budget or adopts the budget. And then as a seemingly just a formality, Royalton and Bethel also approve it, so. Mm -hmm. I just put it, but I did have some questions in regards to it. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not going to be able to answer anything except the salaries and the retirement stuff, everything else they did. Um, I just gave them some numbers based on Jen's request. So. I, I had um, noticed that they had set aside some money. And in, in this case, it, I think the prior year, it was like 10,000 or 15,000. They put 40 in it this year for, I think what they yep. called ca capital funds. Sure. Do you know if they've established a, a schedule um of capital fund improvements that they need to do there no they haven't yet i had a conversation with jerry and before because you need to have twenty thousand, at least twenty thousand, set aside and per the state requirement your license for the transfer station in case the transfer station closed jen felt that that estimate of twenty thousand is low because if you had a bunch of you know containers to be hauled off etc so um mm -hmm. but when I talked to Jerry, I had suggested that at their next meeting that they establish a capital fund um, for buildings and or equipment or separate the money. And he said that they were interested in doing that, asked me about the finances. I told him it would be no problem. And he said they were going to, that that was their plan because they knew they had equipment issues and building issues. Um, <clears throat> but they had not yet, as of my last conversation with Jerry, established a specific fund. But God knows they have more than forty thousand dollars in need. Uh, so I thought it was good that they put more in it. Well, yeah, I mean, and that was my question. Was you know, I, I think we all know that there's you know a half a dozen or so things on the grounds that need to be improved upon here whatever in the next one to 10 years yeah um and you know is forty thousand dollars the right number like i don't even know you know should it be more should it be less and and even though the budget you know even though the way they put this budget together is is a balanced budget you know if, if you go through and you look through their current budget versus this new budget you know the, the likelihood is this budget's gonna carry a surplus from the looks of it if, you know, if you compare what they're currently in this year, they're on pace for like a surplus of over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. From what I see. And, and I know they're just making the revenues equal the costs or vice versa, but it seems as though that if things progress the same way next year in this budget, they'll probably have the same type of surplus. So I didn't know if, should they be putting more money away or are they going to use that as an undesignated fund so they don't have to borrow money? You know, what's the, <laughs> the rationale behind behind that um yeah jerry did not mention undesignated fund he said they were gonna you know specifically s use it for equipment and our building maintenance but and, have they they haven't set up a schedule yet no and then they had twenty four thousand dollars in there for a new piece of equipment do you know what that is dave uh where what line is that I'm, uh, well it's um 47 oh, right 44 yep point zero <laughs> To be honest with me, I don't know what that number is. Well, I'm sure we talked about, I don't have my notes from that meeting in front of me. Um, and then I would assume from looking at what, what was budgeted in the last budget versus the current actual tracing and then the new proposed that the wage increase that they have in there, are they going to add like an extra person there? Is that no, what they're planning on? We went with a, we, we went with a uh, uh, recommended by Jen 
of a, a across the board additional increase for employees. Okay. Because I was trying to figure out that how that fits because we're Lindley is the Lindley is the phrase uh, livable wage. Yes. And and the uh, I think also in that in our breakdown was she had budgeted for more than she is being paid because she doesn't believe we're going to find a new uh, a replacement replacement so, for the money we're paying her. So I think she put in seventy thousand in the budget for that position. Yeah. And it, and then this this piece here has the twenty two percent retirement in it. Yeah. So. It did because I didn't know at the time when they approved, because they're actually supposed to do their budget in October. So I didn't know at the time. So they'll have some savings coming out of the gate in mm -hmm. retirement or, or if they do have to pay somebody more salary, they'll be able to negotiate, you know, they'll have a little bit more money in the, um, in the budget. Um, to, uh, a little okay. bit more money in the budget to deal with it. So. So there's going to be an increase in fees. Um, how 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 is that going to you know what are the new fees going to be? They actually weren't budgeting an increase in fees uh, oh. that I was aware of. I think Dave. Um, okay, I thought they were. Okay, we, we actually have we have we have numbers of the last year, and due to the new fees and the increase of volume. We actually were going to start with a uh, hundred. We were going to one million dollars was our goal. The number we we're going to use for a uh, uh, proposed um, revenue for fees, and we, even if nothing changed, if, if something changed a little bit, we still are projecting possibly a one point four. So we budgeted for we went from one million to one point one to try to make it a little more realistic but without being too crazy about it. Mm -hmm. the, the numbers look really good. I don't, it's just, there's still numbers on a paper. Uh, the co if the pandemic or whatever you want, epidemic or whatever you want to call it now, gets over and people stop cleaning out their garage and their basements and stuff. And, yeah. and that's not all that's happening. There's a lot of construction rates, a lot of stuff going over the scale. Uh, it also looks like you're being reimbursed for recyclables right now at a higher rate than we had budgeted to. For steel, so we're doing okay with steel, but actual the other recyclables are costing us more. Mm. Yeah, I mean, other than I don't know really, really what what there is for us to do with this budget. I mean. Uh, nothing really i'm not sure what you know because they've already approved it and then i'm sure royalton they may have already approved it or they'll approve it tomorrow night i don't know what their schedule is yeah if three of three of their five select board members are on the, on the yeah that's a good point i think it's approved yeah i mean i guess the only suggestion i would have to the to them there is they you know they really need to come up with a capital improvement schedule so that you can see that, you know, what your cost is going to be and, and how this revenue or, or 40,000 proposed, how that fits into that. Yeah, um, that's something that's being talked about. Uh, it's actually myself and Tim Murphy are supposed to be working on. We really don't have a cut and dried list of what's wrong and it needs to be fixed. But, you know, the building, well, what about the building? The scales, well, what about the scales? So we got to dig deeper into what's wrong, what's it going to cost to fix, and then we can make this capital plan. We're, we're, it's getting better, but it was kind of way behind. Yeah. yeah. He's right. So, so right now it seems like the 40,000 that you guys have thrown in there is kind of a placeholder, placeholder yeah. throw exactly. a chunk of money we in could, there and see. I think we could easily spend that on the building. Easy. Oh, it, it, you probably spend that on the scales. And the scales is where we make our money, so that's where I'm going to propose the money goes first. So. Okay. So I guess um, we just need a motion to approve the transfer station budget for 
2023. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion from Dave. We have a second. Second. Okay, Gene beat you to it, Paul. So Gene second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> so what happens you're not present, Paul. I know. You're getting beat tonight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Bethel Historical Society request for the coin drop. We had that application in our packet. We are proposing that for May. Yeah, I think the motion is laid out there. I think that you need to make sure that they, you'll approve it with a proper traffic plan and, and insurance, proof of insurance. Yep, so we just need a motion to accept um, to allow the Bethel Historical Society to have a coin drop on May 21st, 2022. And with that approval comes that they will uh, provide the proper traffic plan and proof of insurance. So moved. <laughs> All right, Paul. Did Paul say something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moved by Paul. Second. Second, <laughs> Second by Gene. Simmer down there, Paul. You're getting too far ahead of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And we already took care of the Cub Scouts. So, town manager report. Anything that uh, we haven't covered, Therese? Um, I don't think so, but let me just flip back. Mm -hmm. Hang on. I got to scroll backwards. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, so I did mention briefly that there is, uh, that I'm working with Brian Wright and, um, to figure out the original layout of Wright Road. And I had a conversation with Richard Wanna, uh, who's a surveyor who surveyed, um, Brian's property who has very good reputation and I got, did talk to Derek Wright and let him know that you know Brian wants to subdivide more he already had subdivided he wants to subdivide more and then in do some work on Wright Road we need to figure out the layout and I did explain to Rick uh, for him and Bev's sake that you know uh, Brian wants to bring power up there so he's working with GMP to do that and he wants to improve the road. So it's only going to increase the value of Rick and Bev's land. And Rick was not opposed. He just wants to be in on the discussion. And I did tell him as soon as I um, had spoken to Richard Glenna and found the deeds that he referenced in his survey that I would reach out to him and, and see. So I'm hoping that when I spoke to Mr. Lunna, he had directed me to a couple of volumes so I need to get into the land records and pull those. And he said he would look and see what he had for information as well, because I had had Jean Burnham look one day when she was in. I can't find the original survey of the road in one of the road books, but Mr. Lana um, felt that it was in a different book that I hadn't looked in yet. So we're, so we're in the preliminary doing that. Obviously having FEMA meetings uh, about Pinello Bridge and we just, I just had a meeting, oh, uh, I don't know, Thursday with VHB, the engineering contractor in the state, somebody from the state. And it looks, it's a lot to go through FEMA. I'm not sure we're going to end up moving that bridge. We're talking about putting it in right back where we had it, just going higher, uh, just to keep the cost down. So um, I will keep you apprised of that. And then obviously just working on town meeting and, or town meeting, town report um, to get that ready. Do you know, or can you find out for us what a cost to survey, you know, like right road or those, yeah. sections, how much yeah, they man. are so we can have yeah. that conversation and. Yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that, but, um, but I will ask Mr. Lana um, if, if we yeah. need to. I'd, Paul I'd Park, what, what that cost. Yeah, because he'd surveyed one side of the road already. So, which was great. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that when I pull the deeds, I'm going to find the information that we need. So we'll see, but I'll keep you in the loop. <clears throat> okay. And then, uh, like I'd said to you, I think, and we're not, 
we need to wait for the legislature to go in session. So we will have more information on what your options are going to be about Australian ballot or how to run or what we're doing at town meeting until the legislature goes into session. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know the answer. I don't, I don't even know what our options are yet. All we know is that supposedly that's the first business they're supposed to pick up. I think I put a little information in your packet. And <coughs> as soon as I find out, um, we'll talk about it. But typically you have to go to print by what mid January. Yeah, I think the end of yeah mid to end of January. Yeah, so we'll know they they'll so really we got like the the next meeting. Yeah, and, um, and if we don't know by then, then it's business as usual, right? Yeah, I you know it. I'm hoping that I don't know what day they're going into session. So, but obviously they know I think the it's the statute. first week in January. Yeah. yeah, and they know the statute yeah. as. Uh, they know the statutes as well as we do. They know that there's a time crunch and what they need to do. So, um, so I'm hoping. So right now we're we're kind of in a holding pattern, um, but at least now that you've approved the budget, I can finish up you know that part of the warning. So, and it just depends on what the wording is of the rules that they pass too. So, until right. we know what they're up to, I can't advise you. I mean, I would, I would assume at this point that they will pass that. Oh, I, I would assume. Probably so. be a pencil whipping exercise for them on day one. I would yeah. Assume. Then, oh, yeah. So then I think we have to, as a board, prepare to have a discussion again in regards to the warning. Yeah. Because at that point, it wouldn't make, it wouldn't be fair to, well, default to Australian ballot due to COVID reasons and then vote for Australian ballot through Australian ballot in the future. Um, right, and I don't even know currently, you know, we have to reread the, I had read the law currently the way it was worded, and then I sent an email to VLCT to see what their um, interpretation of the current law is, because normally when you vote from the floor like you do, um, if you were gonna go to Australian ballot, you have to vote from the floor to approve that. So I, I have the email out to VLCT asking them about the law that's in place now, and then we will wait and see what the law is or what the rule is gonna be that the legislature passes. So at this point, um, we need an interpretation of the current statute and we need to wait and see what the legislature is gonna do. Yeah, so they may wanna just have a placeholder on the 10th meeting to have a discussion on it. And yeah. If they don't pass anything, then we can just, you know, ax it. And if they do, then we can have a discussion on it. Yeah, exactly. Does, does anything that's on the, on the warning then automatically get on the ballot? Yes. If we go to an Australian ballot uh, situation. Yep. That's all, like items, all items on the warning would automatically go to a, on a ballot. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. like last year, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, has Bethel considered rescheduling for a different time? And I don't know what the ramifications are, but uh, <laughs> a bright sunny day in May or even June might allow well, outdoor. No. Yeah, we, you know what, we don't know what the options are going to be for sure, what the legislatures are going to pass, uh, so we don't know yet, but what we, um, but what you have to keep in mind is if your budget didn't pass, you don't want to go too late because you need a budget to start July 1, so that's something to keep in mind. I know uh, Brookfield rescheduled from March to May, um, I don't know what their turnout happened to be, but um, I know. So it, it'll be something to talk about at the next meeting for sure. Okay, I just wanted to plant the seed. And not to chase the rabbit down the hole, but if we didn't pass a budget in time, we would default back to the current budget, correct? I believe that's true. So it's not like it's the end of the world, but. Hey, uh, I never had to do that though. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> no, not no, no, not uh, chase the rabbit, but yeah, so. Uh, Okay, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but you may want to just placeholder it for the 10th and we can have the discussion and with whatever information we get at that point, so. 
Um, and then means we're just talking about. So the January meetings, I have a personal conflict at both meetings. So, and I'm willing to do whatever you, whatever the board wants to do. I can either either somebody else run the meetings on on the 10th and the 24th, and I could just I'll probably show up about 45 minutes late, or we could start those meetings like a half an hour later. Um, and I'll try to like split my personal thing with here. Um, I'll leave that early and come here um, slightly later. So I, whatever the board wants to do on that, if you wanna keep the meeting the same and someone run it and I'll just come in late or push it back to like 6.30 for January. 6.30 is fine with me. I would prefer a later start time. Yeah, I'm good with that. Fine with that, as long as Therese keeps the list down so we don't go too late oh yeah it's all, <laughs> all right 6 30 sounds all right. good thank you uh, to, uh, we had the select board meeting minutes from the 13th anybody have any anything on those i have a couple of things um in the budget discussion area, there's a, a comment about Chris's, Chris's plan was to put 2% into the capital roads. And I, I don't think we talked about doing, doing the increase in that kind of a format down at the bottom of the first. Yeah, we had he had said he'd like to see it go into capital funds, maybe roads because we were still behind. I think it was part of a conversation they had had, but I could just change it. So it says that he wanted to put it in. Well, it's just the 2% number. I don't know if we oh, were okay. designating a certain- I think we had number. talked about that time that we were talking about a total budget of 2% increase. Right, right. And I think at that time we were what, sitting at one. So we were gonna add another 1%. Right. And then we had talked about taking that extra and putting that into the capital yeah. funds. Yeah, I believe that okay. makes sense. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Well, that was before the final numbers, you know, were were in. Yeah, and okay. and then the other thing, just for a general comment, Therese, do you look at the draft minutes before they go to the Herald? I uh, I don't know where she gets the minutes from the Herald. I've only spoken to the lady once, so I don't know. I'm assuming she gets them off from our website. But I don't know unless um, I'm just wondering because Julie, do you send them to her, Julie, directly? It, in case you didn't hear, she said no. Okay, so they must get them off the website, Paul. I don't know. I've only spoken to the yeah. Herald person one time. Well, I know I, I just, you know, I see them in a, in a uh, it, you know, it says in the, in the report in the Herald that they're taken from draft minutes of the select board meeting. But if there are any, um, you know, uh, any things that need to be corrected and whatnot, sometimes it leads to a misconception or, or an error in, you know, it could be something simple, but I'm wondering if those are the best to be put out. I know they have to be put out within a certain number of days um, after the meeting, but I wonder if we need to, you know, look at them a little closer before they go out there. And some of the committees too, I see, you know, some of the committees uh, have their minutes in the, in the Herald too. And yeah. uh, it's, it's, I, don't, it's I don't know hard. if we need to review well, them. I don't, it's too. hard because we have to, I put them out, I edit them. Julie sends them to me, I edit them. I put them out as a draft after I've gone through them. So if there's any corrections that you guys make at the next meeting, you know, you do, but by then it's two weeks out. So, and she doesn't, whoever the person is in the Herald doesn't call me to clarify anything. Right, but like in the Herald, for example, they talked about repainting the town hall as opposed to repointing the town hall. Oh. So I don't know how, you know, things like that, yeah. uh, you know, kind of happen uh, yeah. if, if we yeah. have any two, more. Two things, that, that statute about the minutes being available within five days, yep. it's draft minutes. 
it's exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and, and number two that, number two the editor at the newspaper is not obligated to report anything exactly as he reads it. He is allowed to play games with the sentences and the words. I know this because they did it to this on the school board all the time. Oh, okay. Do they have something in there that says that these are unapproved or unedited? At, at the end of the article, like that? Says these, these are, this uh, article is taken from draft minutes of the select board meeting. So That's the disclaimer at the very end of the article. Yeah. You're not gonna change that. <laughs> yeah, which you know, draft would mean different to, to you guys. Right. <laughs> maybe, sure. Maybe it ought to be noted on the minutes. Oh, for us to put something in the minutes saying that these minutes are, are unapproved minutes as of this date or something like that? Mm -hmm. Does that sound? Uh, uh, something along the lines of, you know, uh, really the only true place that someone can go to look and see what happens at a select board meeting directly is to look at the ORCA video mm -hmm. of, of the meeting. So maybe some kind of a disclaimer that leads people to look at the ORCA video. Um, I don't know, maybe we're getting a little too far off the be the path here, but can uh, can you, uh, Therese, when you put the minutes or whomever puts it on the web page website, can you put the wa the draft watermark on? Sure. Yep. That way, there it is. And then at some point down the road, once they've come removed, they can be that can be removed. And I don't think there's an issue with probably as well following up with some sort of disclaimer on the bottom of the last page that says, you know, that these are draft minutes, you know, as of this date, you know, to be approved at the next meeting um, or a full unedited version is available at Orca Media or something like that, you know. Um, Our having said all that does not make it appear in the paper. Uh, I just, yeah, which is what they said right. earlier. Uh, they have acknowledged that it's based on draft minutes. I don't think that we all know that they are draft minutes. But if it was, if it said that on the on the document online, that would help others who might be looking at that uh, as well. So. Yep. Appreciate the comment. Or like Dave said, just put the draft water stamp on it. Um, I would just like to see us lead people more towards the ARCA um, video because that's the really the true uh, most comprehensive right. record. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. So other than that, I uh, just need a motion to accept the meeting minutes of the 13th as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then we did have um, some other communications in there, DRB board. Um, and then I guess one I wanted to briefly just make sure everybody had a chance to look at it if you haven't is the class four railroad committee piece of it. Um, you know, they really put a lot of time into some of the, well, probably a lot of the class four roads are pretty challenging in the town, but you know, a couple of the hot button ones right now. And it's probably something I know we're going to have to probably talk about a little bit more in, in depth here on meetings to come on, you know, what, what do we want to do or how do we want to see a framework on these class four roads? And I know for so long, it's, you know, for the most part it's class four roads or class four roads. And we, we do the, the absolute bare minimum on it. And we don't want to be held to a certain standard on the road, but it's becoming, seems like it's becoming more and more uh, a talking point on some of these roads that 
you know, like David talked about before, that have been graded, no gravel. I mean, you're basically grading ledge and, um, you know, so I don't want to say put a policy together, but maybe we should have some sort of understanding in the town on what we're going to do on these or not do on them. At a minimum, we ought to know where they are. You know, or or <laughs> more like some of these that we may have some surveying issues or, you know. We have to um, know where they are. Uh, so it's definitely probably something that we should put on our radar here for, you know, uh, right after town meeting day, probably pick up that discussion on uh, on fourth class roads and um, not just where do we go forward, but some of these that I would say, and I, I think Carl and, and his uh, committee did a really good job of pointing out that it's not necessarily an issue that just impacts this certain road. These are issues that impact that they are seeing on almost all of these fourth class roads. Um, so how, how to deal with these. And I know it doesn't affect as many people, um, but it does affect people that, you know, that do uh, pay taxes as, as much as we do, so. Um, but I thought you did a really good job of <clears throat> doing that. And we may even wanna have <clears throat> Yeah, representative from fourth class roads come in, Therese and Yeah, what that's do. what I just put in my notes was have them come yeah. in March and invite the class four road committee and, and put in the current policy on class four roads in your packet as well. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, how long till they have or are they planning to visit all all of the sectors of the town with class four roads? Um I think that they have, <clears throat> I think that they're focusing on the map that was done <clears throat> and it shows sections that they're unsure of where they are because after ancient roads, that kind of answered a bunch of questions about some roads. So I think after that, they've been trying to focus on segments that were not <clears throat> addressed during the um, ancient roads program, which was several years ago. But they're trying to do and it's going to take them a while years to get through everything i think from what carl was saying yeah of course now you have you know you had the ancient roads that went away or got changed to fourth class roads there i don't know five six years seven years ago and but now you also have the what we call the class three roads that are not up to um, standards um, which kind of are fourth class roads right and, and, and in the state guidelines, we have to, I think, what was it, 10 or 15% that they look a year for us to any of these roads that are identified as not up to standards that we have yeah, to. Yeah, I think that was 10 it. or 15% of those a year, we need to be getting them to standards. And I uh, talked to Rita about that at Two Rivers, and she said it's not as daunting as you think because once we grade roads, and obviously if we do, um, when we take advantage of these grants that we that we've been getting to do like Hooper Hollow. The next one we're actually gonna do as a part of Wright Road, we've done different things. So every time we do that, do a culvert replacement, it it, it goes towards that 15%. But I think the other thing too, is we, we have classifications out there that need to be re-looked at, right? You know, like a, a perfect example was the, the Gilead class three piece that we had just looked at. Like, you know, who would have ever thought that was a class three road, right? So I think there's some of those that we got to figure out what is the appropriate classification for that road. Um, and I'm sure there's more of them out there like that. So maybe, maybe, maybe the entire meeting isn't class four, maybe it's three and four or yeah. gravel roads or something, you know? Well, the re the reason for my question was kind of like we just asked with the, uh, what we've done in other places with capital plans. Do, is there a possibility of a master plan for class four roads in terms of this was what needs to be done uh, even if it's built over a period of time? So rather than we're likely to find this same situation occurs when we go to other sectors, this is what we need to do in this section. And here's a list of of issues that, that we might want to address or at least have in some sort of a comprehensive plan. 
that I'm guessing. Yes, I'm actually working on, I have a format now that um, Two Rivers went and did all of our road erosion inventory and culvert inventory. So I'm actually breaking it down into a, tightening the spreadsheet so it's not in segments, but in miles. And um, myself and Chris and um, Ryan Slack will look at some. So we're certainly looking at that and class four roads will eventually be a part of it, yes. Just gonna take us a while to get it all laid out. Yeah, I but didn't yes, expect it to happen it. yesterday. No, I was just wondering <laughs> if that was a possible goal to have something like that. Yes, absolutely. And and we need to. <clears throat> I agree. Oh, um, I wrote down, Dave, you didn't uh, get a chance. When we were talking the BRTS stuff, you didn't have a chance to talk about the interlocal agreement question. We're going, I'm uh Jerry reached out to me and asked me uh, if we could have a sit down and talk about what what transpired and why he got the letter. And I think personally, if you read the letter that Therese sent to their chair, uh, it's pretty clear that they just want to look at relook at the interlocal agreement. Uh, so I'm going to I'm sitting down with Jerry tomorrow, and just face to face, tell him that. And, We'll see about, I think I'm going to direct him to have Chris get with either Chris or Therese and set up a, probably a meeting. I'm thinking maybe even as late as April, May, because I think we need that, we need as a select board to decide what we want to do. I don't think we know exactly what we want to do. If we're going to stay, if, how, are, how do we want to change the agreement? And if we're plain not going to stay, then okay, we're not going to stay. But I don't think I don't think we've made that final decision. I think but, you're right, Dave. I think that you're totally right. That basically we had to do it as a placeholder, and because you are at a time constraint, so you're either going to amend the agreement, dissolve the agreement, whatever it is you're going to do. You're right. We just had to do it as a placeholder. To start the clock ticking. So I do think that we should either talk about at the next meeting or possibly even have a special hour long meeting just about that one topic for you guys in executive session for you to all figure out what it is exactly that you do want to do. Um, so, but I agree with Dave that it was just really, you had to do something to, to, to get, or else did a agreement would automatically renew. But I, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, I guess the way I interpreted our vote was, is at least at this point, is the board doesn't necessarily know what we want to do with the interlocal agreement other than we agree that that the town of Bethel shouldn't be a part of, or shouldn't be in the trash business, you know. And I know we had laid out some other options with Royalton, um, February, March, or whatever it is when we went through that with them with potential of, uh, you know, buddying up with the, a solid waste contractor or some other different options that we want to explore that they then didn't want to explore. So, um, I mean, I guess that's kind of the way I had interpreted is that we're saying, listen, we really shouldn't be in this business. How can we better serve this for our communities? You know, is this looking for a professional to come in to run it or, you know, um, but if Royalton has it set in stone that they want to keep, the business, then we're probably going to be looking at dissolving the agreement. that agreement in, in in a way or another. Um, I get the feeling that they, they think that it's <clears throat> viable for it to be managed locally. And that's the other point I want to bring up is we, I, I felt quite comfortable being able to say that we do not believe that we should be in the trash business, as you said. So that's what I'm going to talk tomorrow, and, and but we need to sit down and talk about. It. Yeah, you know, and I think the the biggest thing is getting the the two sides together. But I do agree that we need to. And as far yeah. as Teresa's letter, I think that's the big deal: the fact that we had to get something going before January one, mm -hmm. or we wouldn't be able to do it for another year. Yeah, I mean, I know of late, short term of late, numbers wise have looked good there, but you know no long-term fixes have happened. Um, we got, we got know. two, three things come, two, 
three things coming up down there that are going to be a, a pain. We're losing our uh, manager. Um, nobody is out there that anybody's seen that's interested in that job. We already are down one employee. They've had it in the paper and they've got no response. We have another gentleman who's getting closer to retirement, so we're going to be down two employees. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't see us doing it. I just don't see us being able to manage it. Would you guys be willing to do a special meeting of just, just an inter, just an executive session of the select board to talk about this issue for like set aside like an hour, an hour and a half, just that. That way, we don't tack this onto a regular board meeting. Yeah, I, th I think it's important that we get together and talk about it as a board as opposed to individuals. Uh, I, I think, you know, it's a big decision that has to be made. And we talked about possibly having one, you know, representative from each board, maybe sit down and negotiate. But I think the, the first thing to do is to clarify each town's position uh, in this you know, whether or not we're going to try to renegotiate or whether to just going to walk away or whatever it happens to be. Um, so I think it's worth having that special meeting. Okay. I'll look at the schedule and put something out in an email to see what we can um, agree to. I agree. Okay. Yeah, and, I, and I think, you know, I think from when we, us five have met in the past, we seem to be pretty, pretty on board together. Um, on the overall outcome, maybe not all the fine details of how we get there, but um, I know a lot of our meetings typically, Therese, in and around town meeting day, either leading up to or just after, those meetings, board meetings, aren't usually terribly busy, um, other than you might have, you know, the last reading of the budget, um, and then right after town meeting, usually you don't have anything too big other than, you know, tens of appointments, you know, appointing people, but usually exactly. those um, are shorter meetings. Um, if we wanted to like, you know, throw an hour out there to go into executive session to yeah. talk about- just Sooner rather than later. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, you have town meeting day, who knows if the board looks different, you know, you know, it's an opportunity to get whoever, if there is a new person on the board to get that person up to speed. Um, cause if you have one before and then you have changing, you know, board members, then you're, you know, you're kind of back to square one. So you want to wait then Chris and put it on the agenda closer to or after, instead of doing a special meeting, you want to wait. Oh, I was just throwing it out there. I mean, I know, you know, our lives are all busy and, you know, the least yeah, we'll see. Yeah. better, but I'll take a know. look and see what the upcoming schedules. I know January next one is you have two appointments next time equity and inclusion and the tate tetros tetros however well, like towards the end of february or something okay. you know, other than, other than we'll right. have a budget read off meeting which i can't really see there being a whole lot of questions in regards to the budget um, no. well okay. you may end up having to have some zoom informational meetings if, if things go in that direction yeah just like last year yeah we'll see what happens no. Oh, no, yeah. this is right. Well, I guess if it's, you know, for convenient factor, I mean, couldn't we always three schedule a executive session Zoom meeting? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. would that work with the board if we had to make a special meeting, but at least we don't have to travel down. We could do it from home and. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. With me. yeah. Okay. All right. We could talk to Lindley when she gets back and see what she thinks about yeah. that as well. She's always yeah. good for Zoom meeting, so okay. I'll talk to her though. Okay. I just I just think we should move expeditiously. <laughs> uh, yes, there will be a transition to quote the new but, select but board, whatever that looks if, like. If you have two new board members, we're really pushing that way out more so than if you if we could come to some sort of consensus before town meeting we have five people that are informed maybe the other two would, would want something different happen but at least we'd be talking five 
Five people have been talking that have been to the around long enough to know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes that has the. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think once we get together and have our discussion, I think. I think we'll come to agreement on a lot of things pretty quickly. I yeah, think, I think that's right. my thought. I, I, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I just, the time-consuming yeah. thing is if we decide to resolve yeah. or leave or whatever, is doing that negotiation thing or, or making the decision of how we want to negotiate it. Right. What do we want? Mm -hmm. What are we willing to give up? But most things are going to take the time. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Any further any other business come before the board before we we're going to go into executive session to talk about the dedication of the town meeting day? No. Okay, just need a motion to enter executive session. Okay, moved by Dave. Second. Second by Thank Paul. You, All right. Um, so, how will we do that, Therese, with executive session? You and Paul are on I Zoom. Can you make it? Can you well, block it so nobody else can log in? Or well, so far, I think if I can boot out Orca Media, I'll be all set. I don't know if maybe Orca can just sign out. Yeah. Yeah. You're um, good. Thank you. Thank you.